Does the new M3 MacBook Air fix the biggest issue that we had with the M2 MacBook Air? The fact that it has a single NAND SSD chip, which made it have much slower speeds as far as storage than the M1 and also cause issues if you're multitasking or doing heavy productivity, especially with the base eight gig model that we have right here. Well, today we will find out. Now the M3 model costs only $100 more than the M2 and we have a lot of differences in terms of CPU performance, graphics, and some other updates that I'll talk about, but both of these are base 256 gig models and let's go ahead and run this speed test. Look at that guys, man, this is really cool. For write speed, we have 1,584 for the M2 compared to 2,108 for the M3. That is over 33% faster in terms of write speed and write is typically slower, getting close to what the M1 had. And we know that the M3 does not require two NANDs, but it's a lot faster. But wait till you see the read speed. We have 1,576 for M2 compared to 2,880 for the M3. That right there is matching or even beating the double NAND M1 MacBook Air that we loved so much. So right here, we have almost twice the read speeds. And some people might say, well, it doesn't really matter that much, but it does. Because both of these are eight gig machines, when you're multitasking or doing heavy productivity, it will use your storage as RAM and having that read speed be almost twice as fast will speed things up and make it more responsive. Now, I am gonna run a few more tests that give us a little bit more detail, and we're gonna open up these machines, and it's a painful teardown, but see exactly what's going on on the inside. So this is a great surprise, but my favorite surprise feature of the new M3 MacBook Air is that it now finally supports two external displays when you close the lid for a professional desk setup. But the problem is that the new MacBook Air still only has two Thunderbolt ports to begin with, so you have nowhere to plug in your other devices or accessories. So because of that, you'll need to get some sort of a USB-C hub like this one from our sponsor basis that only takes up one port leaving the other free while giving you dual display support with the hub itself. And even better, you get 4K resolution at 60 Hertz refresh rate on both of the displays using HDMI for a perfect multitasking desktop setup with extended displays. Or on the other hand, it supports 4K 120 Hertz if you only have one display. And not only that, but it's also jam packed with eight more ports like a 100 watt PD pass through charging two USB 2.0 ports, an RJ45 gigabit ethernet jack, two SD card slots, including TF, and two 10 gigabit per second ports on the other side, one being USB type C, which is actually a perfect match for super fast data transfer from an iPhone 15 Pro. On top of that, it also comes with this little button that you click once for Windows or twice for Mac OS, instantly locking your screen for privacy. And you can order the hub today using the link in the video description below. Now for my next test, I wanna use Amorphous Disk Mark, which is gonna give us a lot more info. And the very interesting thing is that here at the bottom, it shows us the name of the SSD chip or chips, and it is AP0256Z, both of them, 256 gig. Um, and that means they're identical. That means that we don't have one single NAND, that's just a faster version. Um, and I don't know, I guess that makes it a little more mysterious. How can it be the same SSD, but now running almost twice as fast? So we're gonna see that, but let's go ahead and run all of these tests right here. All right, guys, we have our results right here. And as far as the top sequential test, um, the difference is a little bit smaller, but still a massive difference in performance. And you guys see we have the right speed here. And in pretty much every metric, the new MacBook is beating it out, which is great because the M2 was way slower than the M1 MacBook Air. And now I have my four terabyte 
Thunderbolt super fast external drive because I want to test out some transferring speeds because just testing internal speeds is one thing, but when you actually have to transfer data in large amounts of it, that could be a much different story with a much greater difference. This is a 117 gigabyte file and it's our folder with all of our tests for these machines that we need. So let's go ahead and drag this and start our test. Right away it says about a minute remaining. We'll see if that keeps up. The way that most of these SSDs work, you have a first chunk that's pretty quick and then it does start to slow down. So right now it already says about two minutes left got a little faster, so let's let this run out. All right guys, it's been over two minutes, two minutes 15, and it still says about two minutes remaining on here. And it looks like this SSD is averaging about 250, and then it jumps up to 400, and then back to 150 or so. So not very fast transfers once you get past the SLC cache, and I'm hoping that the M3 is gonna be a lot faster. Wow guys, that took six minutes and 29 seconds. So much for about a minute. And now let's see what this M3 beast can do. All right guys, bam, right there, four minutes and 29 seconds. So yes, the M3 also does slow down like most SSDs, but that right there is the savings of two minutes when both of these are base 256 gig units. So with all the speed increases that we saw previously and now with this transfer, let's go ahead and see what Apple did to the inside of this machine. I have my trusty iFixit kit here. Thankfully it's only four screws. These are pretty easy to open compared to the MacBook Pros. And bam, we have that beautiful covered up <laughs> design. I love how clean it looks with that fanless design, but of course we're not gonna see anything without taking all of this apart, which takes forever. So let's do some movie magic. I'm gonna take this apart and we'll take a glance on the other side of this metal heat shield. All right guys, so I got a bunch of these little parts and screws out. Um, Apple's doing some trickery. Each little cover is using different kinds of heads and screws, which they didn't do in the past. Now, I was gonna take it all the way out, but Ben had a genius idea to try to just lift this cover up without taking the rest of it off, which is a huge risk and huge pain. So we're peeling this thing back here. And thankfully, we already did the benchmarks for thermals. All right, so under here, we have a bunch of chips. Let's peel this back a little bit more. We need a few more screws here. It won't let me open it. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's peel this bad, bad boy oh, up. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Apple, they yes. listened. The amount of content we made. Maxsec beat Apple. The amount of M1 MacBook Airs that people bought because this truly made the M2 version slower than M1 if you're multitasking with eight gigs, which is insane. We did it, we won, Apple listened, and there we have two NAND Woo! chips. They went back, oh and gosh. this cost Apple more money. Believe it or not, a single 128 gig NAND actually costs more than a 256. Now they have two 128 gigs here, which means it's more than double the price compared to before where they just used one for the same capacity. And there we have it, two NAND chips. Wow. Thank you, Apple, and everybody else out there that wants to have faster workloads without slowdowns when you're gonna be using swap, without glitches, this is amazing news. And this by itself makes that extra $100 way more worth it. And then you add in the dual displays, you add in the faster uh, CPU performance, single core multi, you add in the ray tracing, the better battery life. Man, this is the best news that we've had for a while. So that is amazing, guys. Now we know why we're seeing those better benchmarks. And yeah, I just don't even know what to say. I'm speechless and I'm very, very happy. So there you guys go. Did Apple fix the M3 MacBook Air? Fix the biggest issue with the M2 MacBooks? Yes, they 
did. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click that circle above to subscribe and check out one of those great videos right over there. We have some more great videos coming with the 16 gig versions, um, some very interesting content. We'll see you in the next one.